Welcome in, guys. This is going to be the first episode, and unfortunately, I'm by myself on this one. First episode of One Turn at a Time. We changed the name of the podcast because, well, it just fit all the sports. Um, so, starting out, we have a couple big pieces of news. Um, first off, we have a new sponsor. Um, let's see if I can. It's Dubby Energy Drink. Um, if anyone is interested, just send me a message and I will make sure you get it. Uh, I have a discount code for 10% off your first order. We also have a new, uh, the second one is a band named Grimrock, a buddy of mine. Uh, introduced me to them. They are a rock type. I do apologize if that's not what they are, but they are, it's called the New Prince of Darkness is what they are being called. They are out of um, Morgantown, West Virginia and Pittsburgh, PA. Um, I will give you a, see if I can find it. Here is just an idea of what they play. Might be a little on the heavy side, but it's okay. This is a song called Feeling Uncontrollable. So that is, you know, if you guys want to go follow them on Facebook or on YouTube, it is Grimrock. Um, YouTube, it's Grimrock and Roll. G-R-I-M, then Rock and Roll, all one word. Um, but they are a band out of Pittsburgh, so out of Western PA. Um, as far as going to the podcast itself, like I said, I'm by myself tonight, so I do apologize. It's going to take a little bit. Uh, first, we're going to start with the birthdays for this week, which is Ryan Donato, which is out of the Kraken. Uh, he was on April 9th, so yesterday. He's the center, number nine. And the other one is also from the Kraken, and I do apologize because I'm going to butcher his name, is Oliver Bjorkstrand. Uh His birthday is actually today. He's the right wing, number 22. Like I said, they're both from the Kraken. Um... The rookie of the month is Ty, Ty Carte, or Cardi. He's the forward for Coachella Valley. Um, he scored 17 points in 15 games in the month of March. So, congrats to him. Um, Columbus Blue Jackets recall Jet Greaves from the Cleveland Monsters as part of what's called the I-71 call-up. Uh, Pittsburgh has signed forward Justin Adamo for the 23-24 season, so at least we have one player. Um, the Blue Jackets assigned Justin Richards, a forward, to Cleveland Monsters. Um, the <clears throat> head athletic trainer Tom Borden has now been a part of a 1,000 games for the Monsters. Whew. That's a lot of games. Um, Washington uh, signed goalie Mitchell Gibson. Uh, 
The only other birthday I missed at the beginning was John Walton, who is Washington's radio personality. Uh, that was back on April 2nd. We missed that last week. Um, Bill Sweezy, uh, defense from Columbus, scored his first ever point in his NHL career on, on April 2nd. Um, Marcus Bjork, Juna, Luato, and Justin Richards have all been recalled as part of the I-71 call-up uh, to the Blue Jackets. Um, unfortunately for the Capitals, which I know they're Dan's favorite team, failed to make the Stanley Cup for the first time since 2013. Um, Alex Nylander, which most of you know from Pittsburgh, uh, was recalled from Wilkes-Barre on an emergency basis. Ovechkin, um, it was upset over not making the playoffs. Um, he feels like it was hard playing for nothing. Um, which, it's not for nothing. Every team has their year. Um, Anthony Mantha, uh, unfortunately has a lower body injury, uh, missed the game against the Canadians, uh, which unfortunately left the Capitals shorthanded. Which, unfortunately means that Hershey loses a player. Beck Malenstein, a forward, Recalled from Hershey to the Caps. Hmm. Even though they didn't make the playoffs, we still had to get our players stolen. Um, the Capitals sign, uh, again, Mitchell Gibson to one year, entry level contract for 23 24, after posting an 18 7 2 record with a 2.25 G, uh, average. Um, Three shutouts in his Harvard University, the, uh, his college days. Uh, we welcome him to Washington. Um, on the Stanley Cup side of things, it's Kraken is now in. Um, so at least we have another team in there. Um, Sidney Crosby, which I know you all are probably tired of hearing about him. Uh, for those who don't know, he's the captain of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, scored his second goal of the game against the Red Wings and reached a milestone 1,500 points in his NHL career. He's a busy little boy. Um, the Capitals uh, ended up reassigning forward Ludwig Person to Chocolate and White. South Carolina made the Kelly Cup, which... The Stingrays are ECHL, so that's why it's the Kelly Cup. Um, the Pittsburgh Penguins assign, and I do apologize for butchering their names, uh, defense Peter Delibator to ECHL Wheeling from Wilkes-Barre. Um, and uh, let's switch over, switch gears here for a minute. Uh, talk about the scores for the week, starting with AHL. Hershey had a good week, with the exception of the Providence game. Uh, they were in Providence. 3-1, to one, they lost, unfortunately, the Bruins, which we seem to have a thing with them. The next two games, the 7th and the 8th, Bears and the Thunderbirds, 3-2 uh, to two in favor of Hershey, and they were in Springfield. Um... Uh, and then Bears versus the Checkers was 5-2 to two in favor of Hershey again. Uh, they actually play tomorrow night as well. Uh, moving on to Lehigh Valley, we have the Phantoms. Their first game was against the Checkers the day before we faced them. Uh, they, both games they actually won. 5-2 to two was the first one. Uh, both were in Allen down two. Uh, the second one, the Phantoms and the Thunderbirds. It seems like Hershey and Lehigh wanted to switch teams. Uh, it was 4-3 to three in favor of Lehigh. So it doesn't seem like the Thunderbirds and Checkers were doing very good. Um, next up, we have Wilkes-Barre Scranton. Uh, the Penguins and the Checkers unfortunately went in favor of the Checkers. 5 nothing in Wilkes-Barre. Um, game number two for the Penguins. 3-1 to one in favor of Providence. 
Um, and the following, the final one, uh, they were in Bridgeport, eight to two in favor of Wilkes-Barre. Uh, moving on to our neighbor to the west, the Cleveland, the Monsters versus the Senators. First game, they were in Belleville for the Senators. They won one to nothing. Second game, Laval. So they were in Canada. They won five to four. Third game, Monsters and the Senators. Again, three to one in favor of Belleville, unfortunately. Um, we move to the West Coast. Um, to our Firebirds, or Dan's Firebirds with Mr. Eddie. Um, unfortunately, they only won one out of three of their series. Um, the first one was Firebirds versus the Wranglers, 3-1 to one in favor of Calgary. Second one, like I said, 2-1 to one in favor of Coachella. Third one was Firebirds and Silver Knights, 3-2 to two in favor of the Silver Knights. And that was in overtime. Moving over to the NHL. We don't do the ECHL, sorry guys. Um, for those of you who like Reading Royals and stuff. First set of games was the Flyers. Flyers and the Blues. Unfortunately, it was 4-2 to two in favor of the Blues. They were singing the blues all right that night. Second one was Flyers and Dallas. Again, we blew it. Four to one, Dallas. Third one? Yeah, we might as well just say we blew a four game streak. Four to nothing in favor of New York. Flyers and the Bruins? Five to three in favor of Boston. We move. To the other side of the turnpike. And we have the Penguins. Thankfully the Penguins showed up. But unfortunately not in game one. Game number one. They lost to New Jersey 5-1. to one. Brian will be happy about that one. Next game was Penguins versus the Wild. 4-1 to one in their favor. Then they played in Detroit. 5-1. to one. In favor of Pittsburgh. Again, Crosby must remember how to play. Then we move to Dan's Columbus Blue Jackets. Unfortunately for him, Columbus really forgot to show up. First game was Toronto. They lost 4-2. to two. Second one was the Devils. They lost 8-1. to one. Final one was the Rangers, and they lost 4 to nothing. Dan, I think it's time to choose a different team. Next up, we got our neighbors to the, to the south, the Washington Capitals. Unfortunately for them, Dan, you really need to start picking better teams. First one was the Canadians in Montreal, 6-2. to two. Second one was Florida, but they were in Washington, so it's okay. 4-2 to two in favor of Florida. So, yeah, we were home, but they forgot to show up. Third one was the Kraken. It was out west. They remembered to show up. 5-2 to two against the Canucks. 4-2 to two against the Coyotes. And 7-3 to three against the Blackhawks. So at least some of our teams have shown up. And as far as that goes, that covers the hockey side of things. So turn one's taken care of. So give me a few minutes, catch a breather, and I will be back with turn two.
you guys have anything to say, go ahead and say it. I'm just updating some things. Okay, I think we're ready here. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to turn two. Turn two starts off with the fact that we were at the dirt track. Which used to be just a short concrete track. Uh, we'll start with Procter & Gamble. For those of you who don't know who Procter & Gamble is, they are typically laundry detergent. Um... In fact, for this one, it was Tide and Gain were sponsoring Call It Gracing. Um, so they were trying to clean up the track. Don't unfriend me for that bad joke. Um, on April 5th, the Cup team owners decided to boycott the quarterly meeting with NASCAR. Um, after revenue talks with the sanctioning body, um, it just was not a pretty sight. Um... And as a joke, um, Tony, a.k.a. Smoke, Stewart, um, was returning to the dirt track racing this weekend at Bristol. That was an April Fool's joke. He didn't actually do it. Um, <clears throat> the next two kind of have, or kind of share some things in common. Uh, Byron and Bowman had their cars sent to R&D. As a random inspection, kind of like Dan when he gets random drug tested. Yes, I threw that joke in there on purpose, and he knows all about it. Um, while they were both at R&D, unfortunately, they got handed L1 penalties, or level 1 penalties, uh, which means they both lose 60 driver points, 5 playoff points, 60 owner points, and 5 owner playoff points. In addition, the crew chiefs, Brian Camp and Greg Ives, were both fined $75,000 and suspended for two points races starting this upcoming weekend. Oh, cool. Um, Cody Ware, the number 51 Mustang, unfortunately missed the race this weekend due to some personal issues. Uh, Matt Crafton, for those of you who don't know who he is, he's typically a truck driver, uh, will be ra or decide to race for him. I uh, got a hot seat opportunity, basically. Um, unfortunately for the Hendrick guys, uh, NASCAR made some rule changes. Um, because they didn't want to repeat the same issues, NASCAR basically said, this is how things are going to happen now, and if you guys don't like it, you don't have to be in the sport. Um... Joey Logano, the number 66, won for the trucks. And apparently I missed it. Um, but there was a laundry list of accidents. Again. Um, I do apologize ahead of time, guys. I... was a little distracted with things this weekend so as far as the monster energy race the results for that was Mr. Christopher Bell this decided to take that one away from Tyler Reddick 
After Redick was doing a very good job of dominating things. Um, with Austin Dillon finishing third, Stenhouse fourth, and Chase Briscoe fifth. If anybody else saw the race, you saw the number of accidents that came along with that race. Um, now we're going to do something a little different. And I'm going to see how you guys like it. Um, on top of the hockey, baseball, or hockey, baseball, hockey birthdays, I decided to throw in some NASCAR birthdays. Starting with April 4th, we had Bill Franz Jr., which most of you know him as the CEO, Justin Alexander, Austin Dillon's crew chief, uh, Justin Dirks, who is ML Motorsports number 70 Bush Series driver, which we know Bush doesn't exist anymore. It was back in the day. Um, we had Robert Richardson, Romco Late Model, as well as the Automobile Racing Club of America debut at Chicagoland. Uh, we also had number 88 front tire change, and this was when Dale Jr. was driving the 88. Uh, Scott Rosalski. Uh, yeah, they're all four names, so sorry if I butchered that one. April 5th, we had Mike Bliss, who was the 2002 Craftsman Truck Series champ. Buffy Waltrip, Michael Waltrip's wife. Brandy Wallace, one of Ken Kenny Wallace's daughters. And Eric Curley, engine valve train tech for Robert Yates. That name hasn't popped up in a while. April 6th was Herb Thomas. Anybody remembers their history at all? He was the driver of the fabulous Hudson Horton. The very colorful one in cars, if you remember that one. Uh, Ken Bouchard, who is the 1988 Rookie of the Year. Uh, doesn't I couldn't find any more information on him. Chris Carrier, who is Ryan Newman's crew chief. Uh, Ramos Stott is the inductee of the National Dirt Late Model Hall of Fame in 2011. Uh, George Elliott, which you're going to find there's a lot of Elliots in here. He's the car owner for the number nine, father of legendary Bill Elliott, and grandfather to the current legend Chase Elliott. Now we move to April 7th, Brittany Elliott, who, again, connected to Bill. It's his daughter. April 8th, we had Matt Yoakum, who was a Na well is a NASCAR announcer. And then Robert Presley, who, if anybody remembers him, he was the number 77 car. Jasper Engines. Uh, April 9th was Jamie Little. If you know who she is, she's one of the announcers, current, you know, announcers. And April 10th was Mr. Casey Kane, driver of the number 9 red Dodge car. Um, so that is turn 2. Um, not much else to talk about there. Um, so hold on tight. If anybody has any comments, go ahead and leave them. We'll be right back for the end of the Tricky Triangle, turn three. They can hear everything I'm saying. They can hear everything I'm saying. I don't want to do the podcast yet. This podcast, again, is brought to you by W Energy, Energy Drinks, which hopefully next podcast you guys will be able to watch us try it uh, and let you guys know how we what we think. And if you guys would like to order some, let me know. I'll send you the link, and we will get you set up with ordering some all-natural energy drinks. Our other sponsor, 
again. How may you fall asleep? Here is Hang Time by Grimrock. So again, you can find them at GrimRockAndRoll.com or on YouTube or on Facebook. They are surprisingly really good. Uh, my buddy Matt, who I did my Knobles podcast with, had a lot to do with me finding them. So between the energy drink and the musician helping us get our name out there, hopefully this will take off. We are on... YouTube as well as Facebook. The name will be getting changed um, by the, hopefully the end of the week. Um, but let's go back to turn three. The final turn of the Tricky Triangle. Starting with, even though nobody pays attention to Las Vegas, the Raiders sign quarterback Brian Hoyer to a two-year deal. Doesn't give a cost or anything, you know, how much, how expensive they are, which we know they're really expensive. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, oh boy. Mr. Green Bay Packer is apparently joining the New York Jets for this year. Hopefully that means the Jets will make the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Well, guess we'll find out. <laughs> Switching over to March Madness. Um, UConn defeated San Diego 76-59 to win the bracket this year. Uh, going to the baseball, Nolan Arenado for the St. Louis Cardinals slammed his 300th home run in the third inning against the Cardinals... And Brewer against the Brewers. Yeah, my English is awesome. And on a little side note here, because nobody actually pays attention to WWE, um, but this one was an interesting one. It popped up in my news feed. Um, WWE has been sold. Um, and they actually got merged with UFC, forming apparently a $21 billion global live sports and entertainment company. Merged by Endeavor. As if fake wrestling needed anything added. Now we're going to go through the laundry list of baseball scores. Starting with April 3rd. Game number one, we, we had a couple different interesting ones this week because we had some rain delays because of a nasty storm that blew through certain areas of the country. Um, on April 3rd, game number one was Rockies and the Dodgers, 13-4 to in favor of the Dodgers. Game number two was Angels and the Mariners, 7-3 to in favor of the Angels. Diamondback and the Padres, Five to four in favor of San Diego. Guardians and the Athletics, twelve to eleven in favor of the Guardians. Still trying to figure out what Guardians they are. Tigers and Astros, seven to six in favor of the Tigers. Rawr. Orioles and the Rangers, two to nothing. Orioles. Braves and the Cardinals, eight to four in favor of the Braves. They must be brave to be facing the Cardinals. Blue Jays and the Royals. 
wonder what kind of royal they are. 9-5 to five in favor of the Royals. Pirates and the Red Sox. Why does it matter what color socks they're wearing? 7-6 to six in favor of the Pirates. They must have gotten hooked on something. Phillies and the Yankees. 8-1 to one in favor of the Blue and White. Rays and Nationals. 6-2 to two in favor of the Rays. Twins and the Marlins. 11-1 to one in favor of the Twins. I don't know which twins. I didn't know there were any twins on ba- in baseball, like as far as on the same team. Cubs and the Reds, seven to six in favor of the Reds. Wonder how long it's going to be before they change that name. Giants and the White Sox again. What is with the color of socks? Why does it matter so much? Twelve to three in favor of the Giants. Hopefully they're giant White Sox. Mets and the Brewers, ten to nothing in favor of the Brewers. I promise my jokes aren't always this bad. April 4th, Rockies and the Dodgers. 5-2, to two, they must have been dodging something. Angels and the Mariners, 11-2, to two, in favor of the Mariners. Guardians and the Oakland A's, 4-2, to two, Oakland A's. Tigers and the Astros, 6-3, to three, rawr. Orioles and the Rangers, 7-2, to two, the black and orange. Braves and the Cardinals, 4-1. to one. They were brave. Uh, Mets and the Brewers, 9 to nothing. Brewers seem to show up for these games. Blue Jays and the Royals, hmm, I don't think, or, I mean, Blue Jays really are kind of royal. 4-1 to one for the Blue Jays. Pirates and the Red Sox, yeah, you'd, you'd think they'd go for the White Sox instead. Uh, in favor, 4-1, to one, the Pirates. Phillies and the Yankees, 4-1 to one, in favor of the team to the East. Rays and Nationals, 10-6 to six, in favor of the Rays. Twins and the Marlins, 1-0. That was a really low-scoring game. In favor of the Cubs. Marlins, yep. Mm-hmm. Reading the wrong score. I see how that worked. <laughs> Cubs and the Reds, 12-5 to five, in favor of the Cubs. There's where that game came in. Diamondbacks and the Padres, 8-6. to six. In favor of the Diamondbacks. There's a lot of scores to read through. April 5th. Uh, the Blue Jays and the Royals. 3 to nothing in favor of the Jays. Angels and the Mariners. 4-3. to three. Angels. Guardians and Athletics. 6-4 to four in favor of the Guardians. Giants and the White Sox. 7-3 to three in favor of the White Sox. Tigers and the Astros, 8-2 to two in favor of the Astros. Orioles and the Rangers, 5-2 to two in favor of the Rangers. Good old Walker, Texas Ranger. Mets and the Brewers, 7-6. to six. The Brewers are just remembering to show up for these games. Pirates and the Red Sox, very colorful. 4-1 for the Pirates. So the Pirates are showing up too. It's a good sign. Braves and the Cardinals, 5-2. to two. The Bravers, yep. Mm-hmm. That, that's exactly what I put to the Bravers. Twins and the Marlins, 5-2 to two for the Marlins. Phillies and the Yankees, 4-2 to two for the Blue and White. Rays and the Nationals, 7-2 to two in favor of the Nationals. Cubs and the Reds, unfortunately on the 5th, got postponed until September 1st due to some nasty weather that blew through. Um... These next two days, I believe there was some nasty weather that blew through. Um, in fact, instead of reading all these, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to screenshot them. I'm going to edit them, and I'm just going to post them to the Facebook page. Because we'll be here all night if I have to read all this. So. Keep an eye out. It will be on Facebook. Um, the scores will be posted. Um, as well as the video will be posted on YouTube. Um, everything will be... The only thing that won't be posted on YouTube is the scores. But the video is all we need to focus on for YouTube. So, thank you all for joining 
If anybody has any input whatsoever, please let us know. Uh, again, our podcast now has two sponsors. Uh, like I said, it's Dubby Energy Drinks, D-U-B-B-Y. Um, not Dobby like Harry Potter. Um, but Dubby Energy Drinks. If anybody's interested at all in buying any energy drinks from us, let us know. Uh, like I said, next week we should have our ability to taste test so we can let you know how they are. Um, and um, our other sponsor is a band called Grimrock, G-R-I-M-R-O-C-K. Um, they are the Pennsylvania purveyor of rock and the new Prince of Darkness, which honestly their music, it, it's a, it can be a little heavy, but... Um, their alternative rock. Um, here, let me, let me pull up one more song to kind of get us out here. That is all I have for this week. Hopefully Dan will be back next week with me. And we will be able to do a little bit more interacting. Uh, But thank you all for tuning in to One Turn at a Time. Turns one, two, and three. Maybe sometimes there will be a turn four. I don't know. But as of right now, we've got the tricky triangle. So thank you everyone for watching and have a good night.